I know all Christians are in the church of God. I understand that. But that church is not coming to existence yet. One of these days it will. Uh, because uh, I asked someone about it. They talked to me about it. And I said, well, let me ask you. Let's say you have a problem in church. How do you do it? I got to call every Christian in the world to get together. Make a decision on that. Because the Bible says you call the, you know, let the congregate, let the church hear it. He's talking about all the congregation. Okay, that's what he's talking about. So, that's what, there's a warning. I'm telling you folks, be careful who you listen to. You have to be careful with me because I'm liable to make a mistake. You have to know the scriptures. And look at scripture. I'm liable to say something that's not unknown, unknown to me thinking that it's right. So we, we, we just have to look at that, okay? So I want to review chapter 1 just for a moment. It's about the precious faith in saved by grace, okay, that we are. You cannot earn that. You cannot earn grace. You cannot earn your salvation. It's impossible to do it. You could work from now to Thursday and still not do enough to get saved. So anybody or any religion that teach any kind of works with salvation is unbiblical and not of God, okay? Because it's by grace only. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay, that's what I talked about said. And it's through Jesus Christ only. Only a person should say only through Jesus. It's not being a member of the church, it's not being a member of an organization, not a member of a society, it's some uh, religious groups say that we're not a church, we're a society. It's not, it's, it has nothing to do with it. it. It talks about Jesus Christ. It's, that's how we're saved. Because what Jesus Christ did on Calvary, His blood being shed for us. We just sing songs about that, okay? And then, uh, it's, through that, we're given all that we need to live a Christian life. That was a great sentence to listen today. Go right along with that. About it. in Colossians chapter. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 13. You can look at it over 1 through 14. What is it? I guess it may be in there. I was paying attention here. Right? <laughs> uh, and, it went, and, and that teaches us that we've already been given everything I need to live a Christian life. Everything I need. So what's my part in it? If Christ saved me, and Christ has given me now everything that I need to really grow over here, what is my part of uh, of it. My part is this, that i got to add to or support that. All right. I, I, I need to, 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 to do that. And those are the things that's in there. He says, for without these seven supporting our faith. Now, you know what they were? They were there. Back, back up one, Mr. Robbins, if you would please. I'm going to look at that. About virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience and godliness brotherly uh, love and charity or, or, or brotherly charity and love which kind of are the same here but there are seven things there and if you don't have them then you the Bible says you're blind I add to those months to my faith not that I'm adding to my salvation or that I need salvation but I'm learning to live in those things and be a virtuous person be an honest true person is what I need to be and that's what chapter 1 teaches about. Now you can go to the next one if you want to uh, I get her confused all the time, even at the house. And, and we need those to support what we'll be. Here's why. If you don't have those, then you cannot see a far off. You know, a blind person has to have something right close to him. They can't see way out there. They gotta have they gotta have, you know, this i I I got a brown friend and he's got one he's got one that makes a beep, beep, beep noise. Um, but it's close. It cannot be way out there. You can't see what's really gonna happen or what the real danger is. If you don't if you as a Christian don't add to those seven things to your to your faith and begin to live a Christian life what God would have you do, because all the power to do them has already been given. Okay? You, I have no excuse, you have no excuse to say, well, I can't do that, right? You know, and quit saying I'm just a human. That's what we say. That's our excuse. Well, I'm just human. No, you're a spiritual human now. When you got saved, you became a spiritual human. So you're not just human anymore. You're a spiritual human. Okay, now then, is, so to make our calling, you, you have to know if you're saved or not. 
Are you saved or not? You got to make it. If you don't know that, then you, you can't add to it. You don't know what's going on. You're just confused about the whole world. Right? Because here's why. If you don't know those things and that you're saved, you'll be corrupted by false teachers. But we have something greater than that. We have eyewitnesses that saw Jesus Christ come out of the grave. We, we have eyewitnesses that testified to us. They actually saw him. They ate with him. He was never an angel. He didn't come out being an angel. He didn't go in as an angel. He went in as uh, the God the Son. In flesh, he died on the cross. That's why we have God the Son. He died upon the cross, was put into the grave, and came out of the grave and ate with the disciples. Not, a, not just like a little spiritual being floating around. No, actually, physically rose from the grave. The Bible teaches that. There's people that teach that it's not true. That's ungodly and, and it's a lie. The truth is that it did come out because you know what? We have eyewitnesses that tell us that it happened. Not only that, but we have a sure word. We have the Bible that tells us that on, and prophesies it. Now, let's get into chapter, chapter 2. And that was chapter 1. That was just to warm you up a little bit. Get you ready for chapter 2 because here's what Paul says. I mean, Simon Peter. I knew I was going to say Paul one of these days. But we're talking about Simon Peter, okay? Uh, Simon Peter has been led by God to write this. And notice what he begins now. Because if you don't have chapter 1 in your life and doing, chapter 2 is really going to get you to have problems. Well, probably, because here's what it says. But there were false prophets also among the people. Now that when it says among the people, it talks about those in the Old Testament. The Jewish people in the Old Testament. How do we know there was false prophets in, in, in a, a time? In Jeremiah, I'm going to write, you can write this down if you want to and look at it later. But in Jeremiah chapter 5, verses 31, this is what the Bible says. The prophets prophesied falsely and the priests were by their name. Okay. He said, these are people that you, that's in authority and under that are in religious people. And Jeremiah, through God, is calling them out. He says, and, and my people love to have it so. Did you know there's people that don't want the truth? They, they, they'll climb a tree to believe a lie and stand on the ground to believe the truth. There's people like, and he says, "All oh, these people, oh, people love to hear this." Uh, and you watch these TV preachers, how ungodly they are, and, and they say ungodly things about the Bible and God, and people clap at it. People actually clap because you know what? They're just like everybody else. If we're not careful, they're they're fall right into that. Not only that, it says in Jeremiah chapter fourteen, verses. Uh, 14. Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesy, lie in my name. This is talking, it's an Old Testament, okay? That's what he's talking about. And, and, and Simon Peter's bringing that up. said, They lie in my name. I sent them not, God is saying. Neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision, and the things not, and the deceit of their heart. He said, these people who, he, this, is, this is Old Testament. That's what he talks about in that verse when he's saying, but there were false prophets among the people. That's what he's talking about. And then it talks about, even as there shall be false teachers among you. Now in the New Testament, let me tell you what Jesus called those folks. Listen to what he says. It says, beware of false prophets, this is Jesus, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inward, they are ravening wolves. Now, if you've ever seen a wolf, how many of y'all ever seen a real live wolf? They're not little, are they? I mean, I had a chihuahua chase me one time. I had a, a Boston Terrier. Y'all know what a Boston Terrier is? They should put it Boston Terrier. But they are, for what makes them so mean, I don't know. It chased me around and around and around. Now you think about a wolf that weighs 160 pounds that takes down an elk, a deer. You think what chances you have to 
He said, when Jesus is struggling, he's not trying to be kind here. He's not being sweet here. He's telling it just like it is. You know, they'll tear you up. They'll destroy you. A false prophet will destroy you. Will eat you up. That's what he said to them. Then he says, in, that was in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. And then in Matthew chapter 24, 11, he says, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. There's many but I've never seen so many. I get, I get on there and Google and start listening to those, those preachers because I don't listen to them and I don't do that. I, you know, I, I stay, you know. And I got to hear what they were actually saying that they are God. I mean, there is preachers on TV saying, I'm a God. I am God. I am a God. I actually saying that. Who would believe something like that? It takes somebody who knows nothing about God's Word, who, has, who does not have the Spirit of God in them, because the Bible says if it was possible, these false prophets would deceive the very elect. If possible, okay? It's not possible. I mean, anybody claim to be God, any man that claimed to be God is of the devil. Because you remember what Satan, that's what he said to, to Eve and Adam standing right there now, man. Adam wasn't some horse working in a garden. He was standing right beside of Eve and he heard it too. And he heard, he heard God don't want you dead because he will be like him. That was one of the temptations that Satan gave to Adam and Eve. And they bought it to hook, line, and sinker. So if a man gets up and says he's God, I'm a little God. It's heresy. It's, and, and, we, and I'm telling you, I was shocked. And I... When I knew that God was giving me this message about the beware of false prophets and everything on it. Because look what they're going to do. They're going to bring in uh, heresies that's, that's damnation. They're going to bring in teaching that's just going to lead people to hell. That's what Jesus said about the Pharisees. You believe more people you, you, uh, going to hell than you have to get them to heaven. He said, you made it way a whole lot easier for them to get there. And, said, and not only that, look what the apostles are. Even denying the Lord that bought them. Ooh, catch this. Now if you miss anything, don't miss this. If anybody ever tells you that Jesus just died for, the, for a few, read this verse to them. These people who are false prophets who deny the Lord, the Bible says that Jesus bought them. That means He died for them. And they rejected him. Jesus died for even for those who he knew that would reject him. Can you imagine the love of God has for us? And how much that means to you as if you claim to be a Christian. That God says, I'm dying for you even though you don't love me. You never love God all the time. You never love God before you got saved. You were running away from God. Oh, you could have went to church. I grew up in church. I never heard a preacher preach when I was 10 years old. I remember the first message I ever heard in my life. I can tell you where I was sitting. I can tell you what I had on. I can tell you what I did when they gave the invitation to run out of the church. Keep getting saved. That's how much I rebelled against it. Being in church, was in, they used to tell me that my mother would drop me. We had wooden pews. would drop me there and I would cut my teeth on the pew in, in, my, in front of us. I'd rub my, cut my teeth down. Rub it across the table, the back of the you used to tell me that on that old thing that every time I went to church. I remember you used to cut your teeth on that key right Wore me out with that. <laughs> told me every time I came to church, she told me. But never heard, I never heard a word of preacher say it to us 10 years old. Never heard a word. But here it says they're going to deny it and they'll bring upon themselves swift destruction. Now let's go to uh, uh, verse. Two on this thing. Listen. And many shall follow. Here, can you imagine the people who follow these people that they have homes that are millions and millions of dollars? They have five. I think the least one I found was a three million dollar mansion that they lived in. Our 
something wrong with that. There's something. Now money's not bad. Let me tell you something. Money's not bad. But how you get it is. Okay? If I, listen, if I have to get up ever, ever have to get up in this church and beg for money, it's been my last Sunday here. I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to do it. Because if, if God's people don't know what to do, I've had people say, Preacher, how much should I give? I'm going to tell you to the penny, whatever God tells you. He tells you, give a nickel, give a nickel. Don't give a dime, don't give a quarter, give a nickel. That's all, you know. But if I ever have to get up and beg for money or ask for money, I'm going to be gone from here. Because I ain't never had to do that. I'm not, I'm not planning on trying to start doing it. No. That's between you and the Lord. That's between you and God. Has nothing to do with me. Has everything to do with between me and God. What I give, what you give. All right. And I'm gonna be happy if you give or don't give. Okay? <laughs> it's not gonna affect me how I feel about your water. Um, but here's what it says: And by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. They're gonna speak. They're gonna speak evil of, of, the, of what's true. False prophet is. They're, they're gonna do that. Go to verse three. And through covetous, now listen to this. This won't remind you of people who listen to this. And through covetous, what they want, you see. They're, they're going to make merchandise in you. Listen. And the words make merchandise in you. Oh, I'll send your seed faith in. God will bless you. Now, now listen, now folks, if you, do, if, if you, you want to reap a lot, you've got to sow a lot. And if you're just going to sow $50, you're just going to reap $50. Now, who's that sound like? That's, boy, don't, don't, don't that sound like those people do that? If I had to get up here and say, you now look, folks, if y'all want to be me to bless, y'all want to be blessed by the Lord, you know, the money. They say that and get away with it. Thousands upon thousands of people are buying into that and giving in that, hoping that, well, if I give a thousand, I'll maybe get two thousand back. Or I'll get three thousand back. They don't, they're not giving for the right reason or anything. They made merchandise of them. They're just a commodity to them. And people fall on that. It's time somebody stood up to them people. I didn't realize how bad it was because you know what? I've never watched any of them. But you just pull up on YouTube and listen to what people's got and how they do and what they say. Oh, that's sudden. They don't all, they, oh, they'll they talk a good talk and make a good thing because you know what? They know how to do with those words. They're good talkers. But then they'll hit you in on chew, chew, chew. And I tell you, and I've told you that the day I came here, I will aim at your toes. I'm aiming dead straight for your heart. I may hit you in a toe because I'm not a very good shot sometimes, but I'm aiming dead straight at you. I mean straight dead at you. I'm not trying to be around the bush about it or anything. I don't, you know, I'm trying to do this. And you wouldn't want me to anyway, would you? I, I know you would. But you, you think about those, those people. Now what's going to happen to the false prophets? Listen, whose judgment Talks about it in verse 3. Now of a long time lingers not. It's not it's not long off. And their damnation slumbers not. So what's going to happen to them? I'm going to read you what the Bible says. Not what I think or not what I think ought to happen to them. But here's what the Bible says going to happen to them. It's found in Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. It said, And the beast, and you know who that is, was taken. With him the false prophets. The false prophets. And the miracles before him, with which he deceived them and had received the mark of the beast, and to them that worship his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. First part's going to be cast into the lake of fire. Now, this is what else it says in, in Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Where the beast and the false prophet were, uh, and shall be tormented day and night forever. 
That is, 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 is what happened to the false prophet. They're going be, he's going to be cast into the lake of fire. And you imagine how that is, how, how true. I don't know anybody that I've ever met, read about, heard tell of, anything, but I would want to go there to the lake of fire, be cast into the lake of fire. I don't know anybody. I don't Listen, I, I, didn't get, I didn't gave a chance if I'd been able to to witness to Hitler as crazy and evil as he was. And all of his henchmen. I'd love to witness them. I, I, I'd love to share the gospel with them one time. And they've had the gospel shared to them, on it, but they rejected it. I told you before, there's two types of people in the world. It makes no difference what country you're from, what color you are, what color you're not, okay? If you got hair or don't have hair. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I go about. Okay? Are just two types of people. Are just one human race, two types of people. There's the people who says, God, your will be done. And then there's the people that God says, your will be done. He says back to them, you didn't want me. You wanted to be away from me. You, you want me. That's, I mean, he just lets them. People that go to hell want to go to hell. They, they, they didn't want to be with God while there's life. They, they wanted to be away from it. So they wanted to go to heaven. That's, that, that's the only choice they have, have about it. They do. You either want to be with God or, or you don't want to be with God. Okay? So that's, that's what, what the happens to them. And it, it, listen to what else it says. In Revelation chapter 20 verse 15 it says, And whosoever Now you know who the whosoever is? That's a lot of people. Whosoever. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I told a man that I've known for years, one of the nicest guys that I've ever met, who is not a Christian. And I said to him, Do you think bad people go to heaven? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, I'm going to say something to you, and I hope you understand this. The Bible teaches, unless your name is written in the Lamb of Life, it makes no difference how good you think you are. You're going to be cast into the lake of fire with a bad people. Yeah. Now, doesn't that sound bad? I know people who are who come go to church. They they are super nice and do all the things what we would call churchy. But you talk to them and say, I know I need to get saved with these days. And no. They're going to die. If they die like that, they're going to go to hell with mean and bad and ugly people. Okay? And that's a shame. But it's a fact. That's what's going to happen. If you're, the whole thing is not how good you are, not how bad you are. The whole thing is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's what it gets. And, that's, and, and so Simon Peter sets it up in chapter 1, warns us about it. In chapter 2, a greater warning comes. Uh, the, chapter 1 is the one for us about if we're a Christian, we ought to act like one. We ought to live like one. We ought to be one. That's the warning in chapter, chapter 1 of, of uh, 2 Peter chapter, chapter 1. That, that whole thing, you know, there's 21 verses all through there. And then chapter 2 now is a warning what's going to happen to the False prophets. Those who have rejected all the way. They, they just don't. Even though Christ had bought and paid for them, Christ died for every one of those people. Every one of those false prophets, He died for them. He bought them, but they still rejected Him. It's going to be up to us to share the gospel to people. And we need to tell people if we don't start doing it, it will not make any difference how much preaching or singing we do in here. It won't mean a thing. I believe our church and our community are really close to having revival. And I've been praying that God would help us start having revival services and, and uh, stay revival. And it's going to be up to us to react to that. Let me encourage you. The light, one of the last things that Simon Peter said in chapter 1, he says, I will never stop reminding you. Let me tell you something. He's your 
Pastor, I will never stop reminding you. I'll never do it. Here's why. I love you too much to stop. Never give up because I love you too much. And you mean too much to me and you mean too much to the Lord. With every head bowed and every eye shut for just a moment. I don't know where you are in your Christian life and walk. And that's between you and God. But I pray that you're enjoying it. Really, really living it and enjoying your Christian life. Maybe you're here today and you're not a Christian. You've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Or maybe you thought you did and you just weren't for sure. And you want to settle that issue. You want to make sure that your uh, salvation that you have through Jesus Christ is sure today. The link here that I know it's sure. Maybe it's just something you just need to come and pray about or need to pray about right now. Say, God, I need help in that. I'm asking you to pray for revival upon your life and in your life. I can't have your revival. You can't have my revival. It's just something that spreads to each other, but it's our own separate revivals that we have. And I need revival in my life, and I'm seeking that. And I want you to pray for me. And Father, as we close this service, I pray that we be mindful of what you're having us to do. As we pray for one another here, as I pray for these, my dear brothers and sisters, to have revival, and as they pray for me to have revival, send a revival. We're seeking a revival from you. 